was actually um, in eighth grade in Miss Dark's math class in McCord. Um, I remember very vividly, I was teaching in the classroom that is currently Dr. Koheiser's classroom. I was getting ready for work. I worked at a child care. I was in fourth grade. Uh, my initial shock thoughts were disbelief. I had a neighbor who didn't have a TV that came over telling me about what was happening, that they have the TV on. I thought that my son was playing something and uh, the news was repeating. I had an infant in the other room who was crying and it was just a large amount of shock. Uh, I was in that class and I just remember walking in and she was crying and um, from there it, I, it was hard kind of making sense of what exactly had happened. Um, there were people like yelling and screaming through the hallways um, and it wasn't until she turned the TV on and we were watching it in my, my math class that I started to kind of realize that something really serious had happened. My grandma came into the school to pull me out of class, which I was surprised about. Um, and we went to an empty room and she had asked me if I had heard anything that was going on and at the time I hadn't. Um, so when I answered that, she just reassured me that my dad was okay. At the time, um, he was flying for American Airlines and his hub was actually in New York. So she reassured me that he was totally okay and that his route actually ended up in Florida. Um, but I didn't really understand at the time what it meant when she said that there was a terrorist attack on the United States. And Mrs. Chase came in and she said, have you heard what's going on? And I said, no. And she says, you need to turn on the TV and watch. And so we turned on the TV and at that point, the first tower had been hit by the plane. And we just kind of sat there in shock and awe to watch what was going on. My initial reaction was one of shock, but to be honest, because I was so young, it took some time to fully set in. Um, again, I didn't really understand kind of what was happening. I didn't understand why, but by the time I saw it on TV and really pieced together, it was really saddening um, to know what was happening. And eventually it set in that that, that could have been my dad, um, who could have been the one flying that plane, or he could have been in New York. We live in the United States of America. Nobody has attacked us on our soil. Uh, and for that to happen, and just to think of all the people inside the building, around the building, and what all was going on. Uh, it was just very unsettling. And it led to some very different things because I was still coaching football at the time. There was a lot of questions in terms of whether we were gonna be allowed to play that Friday night. When we finally did get the okay, uh, I remember very vividly, we're out of practice, and it's not uncommon for planes to fly over the practice fields, but one flew over and it seemed to be flying lower than normal and it just made you stop and think like, what the heck's going on? Uh, that Friday night, we did play the game. Uh, we went over to the stands afterwards and we did our traditional thank you fans. But then also afterwards, along with the other football team, it was Westerville North, uh, we sang Proud to be an American uh, before we left the field. Just a very, very moving gesture. I think the first thing, the first maybe time that I realized that it affected me as an adult was when I first started teaching and I actually taught at McCord my first year and on that day when we had that kind of um, memorial I realized that I was in the same place where it happened and I, it just kind of overwhelms me with emotions. Um, when I look back and think about what happened and, and, and that experience with it, I was in eighth grade so I think it, of that time as almost like a a loss of innocence in a way. Something like that came out of nowhere. Uh, and so, you know, it, it does make you a little bit nervous, but you can't, you can't stop living your life it, because that's what the terrorists want to have happen. So you just do things. If you see something, you say something, uh, and you live your life as best and as normal as you can. and talking with students who have no working memory because we're alive um, to see how much that's carried on and still has impacts generations. 
um, in relationship to mental health and wellness, um, feelings of safety, um, the amount of people that lived in the city that have moved out. I visited New York after it happened, uh, before Freedom Tower was built, and years afterward, there was just this abyss in the middle of that part of uh, Manhattan. So it's if you don't know someone, you know someone who knows someone, or first responders that went or lost someone. Um, so the connectedness of it just keeps going. In a way, um, I, it was the first time I ever really kind of realized that they're really, that the world is so big and that there's, um, there's so much potential for just evil and um, you know that really bad things sometimes happen um, and the way that that's affected me throughout my life it has been so many ways I have a military father and um, my brother was in high school when it happened and he ended up joining the military as well both have been deployed many times um, to the Middle East and um, it's sort of one of those things that I, I kind of consider a defining moment in not just me, but maybe my generation and, and how we uh, deal with that kind of first traumatic event um, that ever really happened to us all.